I'm Dazzling One. I hope everyone had a wonderful week. And before I go on, although yesterday was Veterans Day, I'd like to thank all of our veterans for serving our country, even anyone who's currently serving. This week, I want to touch on a topic that has fascinated me for quite some time. One that I've heard people talk about time and time again, yet it's hard to wrap my head around completely, and that is the psychology of cults. What I mean by this is by examining past situations of known cults. I find connections can be drawn to everyday people in the way we are sucked in or plugged into what some may call the matrix, and how those pulling the strings and acting as puppets are sort of handling or are playing the role of cult leaders. Before I go into the psychology, first we must understand exactly what a few terms are that I'm sure you're familiar with because it seems everyone I know has mentioned them at least once. The first is a narcissist, a psychopath, a sociopath, and a hysteronic. They all fall under the same category in psychology of antisocial personality disorders all except for hysteronics. And I don't hear people talk about hysteronics as much, but I think it's an important personality trait when you're examining people in power, cult leaders, or even when you're talking about celebrities and people in the media. They are different, though, than the mental disorders where people get admitted to an institution or are given antidepressants for like schizophrenia, post-traumatic stress disorders, or others like schizoid or avoidance personality disorders. In the past, I've discussed how I believe most of these quote-unquote disorders, whether mental, can be boiled down to people who are oppressed or possessed by demons. Sometimes I believe they are also clinical excuses for negative, unflattering behavior. However, much of the time, people with these disorders have a past of severe childhood abuse, abandonment, rejection, whether physical or psychological, and they're usually emotionally numb or just emotionally unstable. I don't believe most people are born like that. I believe all of these disorders are made or created, and a lot of it, too, has links back to SRA, Satanic Ritual Abuse, or MKUltra in some cases when I'm looking at cult leaders. Some famous cult leaders that come to mind are Charles Manson. He's most famous for the murders in Hollywood. He killed Sharon Tate, which was Roman Polanski's wife. And the interesting thing about it is he was away in London at the time, and it's my belief she was pregnant, that it was actually, she was sacrificed, a pregnant woman. And he had made the movie Rosemary's Baby, and he actually wanted his wife to play her in the movie. But in the end, he got a different actress. And then another one a lot of people that comes to mind is Jonestown, because people think of Jim Jones. And he wanted to set up a utopia. It was communist, of course, in South America. And he had a Guyanese community he tricked, and a lot of them had been discriminated against. And he took them there, and then eventually... When his things, when his, everything was falling apart, he had them drink the Kool-Aid, which that's where the term comes from. Basically, it was poisonous Kool-Aid, and it they ended up committing suicide. I mean, it was a huge mass suicide. And then another one to think about is Heaven's Gate, led by Marshall Applewhite. And he convinced 38 people to commit suicide because it's, he said it was the only way to evacuate Earth because his cult was centered around mainly aliens coming back. And I noticed with these cults um, that they're always inspired by some sort of um, religion. A lot of these people, like Charles Manson, um, told their followers that they were Jesus Christ or they would tell their followers that they were descendants of Jesus Christ. I think Jonestown wasn't necessarily connected in that sense because it was more communist but um, you see the aliens there and I think a lot of times that people do actually get visited by demons or fallen angels and they convince them because when you look at a lot of religions everything is divinely inspired. It doesn't mean that it's always inspired by God. A fallen angel can visit you and it's still an angelic visit and they can give this person a sense of feeling godlike. So before I go into how our society is sort of like a cult 
which sounds funny on the surface, but it's really not that funny, is I want to talk about some disorders, and I'm going to start with hysteronics. Hysteronics are pretentious people, generally attention seekers, and are extremely emotional. These people want to be the center of attention in any group and are uncomfortable when they are not. These people may take attention seeking to the extreme in the sense that they will be exhibitionist or seductive. They are usually seen as interesting people. In relationships, they play victim or princess. They control whomever they are with. Yeah, through emotional ma manipulation and seduction, yet display dependency. These people have a hard time being friends with people of the same sex because they may be overly sexual towards their friends or significant towards their friends, significant others. So it's like if you have a friend and they're very hypersexual and I'm I'm talking in the sense of a girl and you have your boyfriend there and then she's flirting with him and on top of him, which I don't know any woman who would feel comfortable with that. And they're also jealous when their friends' attention sucked away. This is more common in women actually than it is in men. And I can see why. A lot of men too today have these disorders as well. And it's sad because society as a whole is collectively ma mainly falling prey into these different ones. But now I'm going to move on to the next. And that is psychopaths and sociopaths are used interchangeably. But from a psychological standpoint, a psychopath is more stable than a sociopath in the case that sociopaths are more impulsive and have a harder time staying in one place or holding down a job. But yet can form relationships with people, whereas psychopaths can't form authentic relationships. Also, sociopaths are more likely, they say, to come from lower income, whereas psychopaths are generally people who are going to have more money. They lack empathy, um, yet are master manipulators, not as psychopaths. They, on the other hand, yeah, sorry, sociopaths lack empathy, yet are master manipulators. They but psychopaths, on their hand, tend to be highly educated and hold steady jobs. They are charismatic and generally make great con artists or white-collar crooks. Sound familiar when it comes to crime? Psychopaths are the best planners and carefully plan out. Even when caught, they are cool under pressure, whereas sociopaths do not because they are fickle nature. However, sociopaths are also considered charming and charismatic as well. Usually great orators, poetic, and carry on great monologues. Usually, they feel entitled to certain things and are rarely shy, insecure, or at loss for words. Yet, they have trouble suppressing emotions, which make them different from psychopaths. They, are also, they also have trouble feeling any guilt or shame for their actions and never apologize. I'm sure you know people like this. They are concerned with their interest, their own interests in a relationship. But psychologists tend to view psychopathy as something genetic, whereas sociopaths are more are born more out of environment and nurturing. It is considered the most dangerous of all personality disorders. The reason it is because they are emotionally dissociated from their actions and like sociopaths disregard other, others' boundaries. Many serial killers that most of you know, like the BTK killer, Ted Bundy, and so on, were all considered psychopaths. Lastly, before moving on to the cult discussion, our nar discussion are narcissists. They are absorbed in oneself. The term derives from Narcissus, from Greek mythology, who fell in love with himself after seeing his own reflection in a pool and able to realize it was merely an image. He was, he was unable to leave the beauty of his image and drowned. A narcissist is someone who is completely absorbed in oneself. They are the center of the universe, literally. People are things to be used similar to the other personality disorders discussed earlier. It is thought that narcissists are the product, once again, of severe child abuse or trauma, leading them to construct their own world as a barrier around them. They usually exhibit snobbish, disdainful, or patronizing attitudes towards others. Then there are the cerebral narcissists, which are those who are in love with their intelligence and that it and they believe it exceeds everyone else's and ordinary people's. They show great disdain for less in, for the less intelligent and are huge storytellers. Sometimes their stories are made up quick to brag about their knowledge. Somatic narcissists are those who are concerned with the beauty of their own appearance. They work hard at the gym usually for their appearance, keep up with the latest fashions. They are generally promiscuous with with a long list of partners. It is believed all narcissists are both but one is chosen over the other and may be dominant in different stages of life. With narcissism, unlike psychopaths, sociopaths, or hysteronics, they can be shy or insecure as well. 
introverted narcissists tend to be more parasitic in the relationships because they generally feed off another success and have more codependency. As you can see, all four of these personality disorders I named are common in people who run the world, in celebrities, and politicians, people in the media, people we even know. I feel that pop culture and society sort of nurtures these behaviors and rewards those who exhibit them versus those who don't. When we look a lot of times, even at, you know, go back to high school, a few years back, or many years back, or if you're in high school right now, and think about how even the people that may have been considered popular or may have been considered the most noticeable were those people that kind of have those traits. And I know there are people that are popular who may not have these traits, but I'm saying, even I guess I'm kind of using stereotypes here, but like when you look at mean girls, you see kind of the narcissism kick in, hysteronic kick in, and some people are psychopaths or sociopaths as well. They're excellent liars, they're charming, they're charismatic, everyone wants to be around them. If they're not the center of the tension, they're upset, they attack anything they pose that poses a threat to them. And I mean, it never leaves you after high school. You, you grow up, you go to work, and you have those people on your job. Those people, too, usually are the micromanagers as well. And then you have the bosses as well that are it. But then, of course, we have people in power and people on TV and a lot of celebrities that fall in this category. I'm sure most of you listening, like I said, know someone or have been the victim of someone like this. I watched The Wolf of Wall Street a couple of weeks back, and although it was highly inappropriate as far as the sex scenes go, I, well, a lot of it was inappropriate in general. I believe it is an accurate depiction of someone who is a psychopath or narcissist, and also just the corruption that goes on on those levels. When we start looking at conspiracy and seeing these people are involving themselves in lascivious behavior and satanic rituals, where they torture themselves and others and participate in strange sex with animals and children, as well as some make strange snuff films, you can't help but notice the trend of these personality disorders, yet at the same time, Hollywood and the media, ca media caters to these types of behavior and tells us that they're normal. The reason I'm trying, sorry, the reason I'm tying all this to the cult is because society as a whole, as long as we are plugged into the matrix or are like one big cult, we have our cult leaders, which are the elite, or some call them globalist. As some may call them, um, they also have puppets, or figureheads, who sort of sub in for them, since they are in the shadows. These people, and those in secret, generally possess these disorders. And what I mean by people who sub in for them like puppets, I'm talking about people like the people we see who like are our presidents, prime ministers, our world leaders, I don't actually believe they are the people that are controlling and pulling the strings. I think there are people behind them. Kind of like last week when I was talking about um, some of the people were advising, some of the bloodlines were advising some of the presidents in power. And Fritz Springmeier talked about how um, always look at the man's advisors. And a lot of times we don't even know who's advising these people. That's what I would call shadow government. And as far as celebrities go, I always hear people saying, oh, this person's in the Illuminati, this person's in the Illuminati. I don't believe that a celebrity can be in the Illuminati. I think they can be a puppet. They can involve themselves in rituals. I think they can do certain things, but they're always never going to be a part of the inner circle. They're not. If they're not bloodline, if they're not related, I don't think they can be actually in it for real. But I do believe they can do everything um, as far as rituals to get themselves ahead, but they're still a puppet. The same goes for many of the people on TV as well that are giving you the news. They tell us what to think when we turn on the TV. Our news, whether you're getting it in from the right wing view, like Fox News, or you're getting it from the left wing view, like NSNBC, or the supposed neutral view from CNN, which it's really all the same. They suggest us what to aspire and hope to become, what to believe in, what to imagine. When you go to school and someone else writes out the curriculum for you to learn, they have already predetermined what they think is best for you to know. They have degrees after you graduate to choose from. They have pre-selected what you must know for each. They also decide what knowledge will be kept from you as well. Same goes for churches. They are under the 501c3. 
which basically is a nonprofit. It means it's a nonprofit organization, so it's tax exempt, which a lot of pastors like the ideal because it saves them money. However, under the 501c3, as talked about in the past video, and I talked about this in the Road to One Religion, they have to go through seminary school um, where he or she is schooled on what to say and emphasize. Um, they emphasize what can and cannot be taught, and that's why a lot of things like the Book of Enoch are not taught there because they're not considered important. And this is why all of the churches seem to have the same message, which is prosperity, feel goodish, bubbly. And like I said, the churches here in America say all the same things. All the schools say the same thing. Everyone is on the same frequency. Well, who is controlling the frequency? That is why those of us who we, who we consider ourselves awake get mocked a majority of the time by the rest of the population as paranoid, crazy, retarded, and so on because we see past the lenses that they've given us. Let's, let me ask you this, if you were in a cult and you rebelled against your leader, their followers would, would turn to you and say, what is wrong with you? You're crazy, you're paranoid, a lunatic, ungrateful. Maybe they would tell you to get mental help, when in reality they are the ones who have fallen under the spell. People look at Jonestown and say, how could they have drank the Kool-Aid? And like, again, it's sad because people don't even know where that term comes from, yet, People are drinking the Kool-Aid every day themselves. And people say, how could they have given it to their children as well? Or they say, people, or they say, how could they have listened to one delusional, half-witted man, yet people do the same thing every day. People follow trends all the time. Sometimes they are ugly, senseless, yet that is what's popular. I mean, I've seen some fashion styles I just think are downright ugly. I wouldn't put it on me yet. I see people rushing out, spending all their money. Maybe they, they're living paycheck to paycheck, but they're going to buy that outfit because they want to look cool. They want to look like something they see in a magazine, even if it doesn't even look good on them. Sad. Or same thing goes for, it's not, it's not always just clothes, but even technology. Some things aren't even great ideals, yet people go out and they buy it, and they want it because it's over-marketed. A star, a star, which is a, which is a reference to fallen angels, are pretty much the modern day idols of wood and stone. People look at these, people look at, people back then and say, how could they have worshipped nothing? Well, when people aspire to be someone else and idolize them, I remember as a child, I wasn't allowed to have any posters of anyone on my wall. I wasn't allowed to idolize anyone. My parents would tell me, they're just people. Why would you? want to be someone else and I learned quick that and I'm not knocking on anyone who's who has gotten famous for their accomplishments but look at how being famous and talented has completely shifted over the years now for the most part to be there's now there's so many famous people who are talentless And now you have celebrities calling themselves gods, goddesses, and so on. It's ridiculous, yet the masses slurp it up like a dog returning to its vomit and praise them. Same goes for these politicians as well. I'm sick and tired of this left and right paradigm stuff. Republicans and Democrats all are the same. And of course, everyone around me who voted Republican, because, you know, here in Missouri, it was one of those swing states, because people were dissatisfied with what the Democrats did. So now they're thinking to themselves, oh, we brought change. I know a guy walked into my political science class. I'm always referencing this class. But he's like, we won. And I'm thinking to myself, you didn't win anything. It's like sports. Just because your team wins doesn't mean you actually win. You don't get the money they get. You don't get a trophy. Maybe, I don't know, I, I think like this. It's more, when it comes to this whole societal thing, I'm very dissociated from it. But the point I'm making here is that um, the, they are saying change is coming and it, the change is a good positive change they think it's not coming it goes back to something I said a long time ago good cult leaders lie to its cult it gives them the illusion of choice oh you don't have to follow me you have a choice when in reality they only say that because they know that they have selected they have already selected the option A or B 
that their victim can choose from, and they have nowhere else to go. Same goes for elections, and even entertainment. I mean, when you look at even the way music works in the music industry, there are some very talented people that are underground and we'll never hear of. You have great voices, you have great lyrics, and then there are people who, they just plain suck. They're not very good at all. Yet, um, they play their song again, 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 again on the radio till finally people start getting used to it and the tune gets stuck in their head. And they usually try to give them at least a catchy tune. So it gets stuck, and so people next thing are humming, singing, listening to it, and then you hear it everywhere you go. They play it in the clubs, they play it at the prom, they play it wherever. And people, they get stuck in it, and then they buy these people's music, and, you know, they just make more money that way. And I've seen the same thing work on TV shows. There's TV shows that are horrible, but they'll keep playing and playing until people get it stuck. They already pre-selected your choices, and then they tell you, guess what, you have the freedom to choose, but I've already given you the choices you can choose from. Much of the time, the cult leader, if the victims are dissatisfied with what's happening, he or she will use tactics of fear or threats to scare them or make them prove their loyalty. I think of all of, all I think with all of the traumatic events that have occurred in the past 20 years in this nation and in the world, most being false flags and psyops, each time they have tried to play on our emotions, whenever people have stood up or tried to go against them, what happens? And of course, the fear of guns being taken away or martial law being declared. Then there are groups that promise to do something about it, whether real or fake, usually nothing is done. Or if something is, the people are punished for their actions and it, it trickles to the rest of us. And that was the other thing I kind of went to, th another thing I was thinking about is how many of these groups that are saying they're fighting for freedom, because I'm, I'm very skeptical of everything, um, they're not set up by CIA operatives just trying to find out who's an extremist or radical. Look at the celebrities who don't do as they're told and then suddenly end up in a load of scandals and have a myriad of charges slapped on them. After a while, they have, after a while, they have had so many psyops, and most of the public are dissociated from terrible things that happen. After the bombing, after the Boston bombings, at least where I am, people just completely stop caring. I mean, they had already seen the Aurora shootings a few months before that, and they had seen Sandy Hook another few months before that, and then they were just like, you know what? This stuff is just going to keep happening. People are going to keep dying, so why should I care? And that's another thing, too, that they're they're trying to do as well. Cult leaders have a grand away sense of self. This is where the narcissism and psychopathy kicks in. They present themselves as enlightened or vehicles of God or gods. Much of the time it is to fill a void. It's a coincidence that much of the time the people running this world believe they are above the law, that they are the lineage of the gods or the fallen angels, the watchers, that makes them entitled to a better life. That the population should be reduced merely because of those around them are not one of them, or the celebrities or idols they give to us to worship are claiming their gods as well. Cult leaders are pathological liars. All they do is lie, 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 and lie. And yet, what is worse is their followers slurp it up like it's the truth regardless of how many times they have been wrong. They even lie for no apparent reason, even when it's safe enough to tell the truth. Some brand this crazy lying since there is nothing to protect. I think all lying is the same. There's no such thing as a little white lie. It's all a lie. How many times have people had faith in this irrational system of government? We have to pass laws to improve the country or ban things, yet nothing happens. Yet, every November, citizens rush to the polls, believing somehow, some way, that each party whichever party, Democrat or Republican, is going to bring some sort of change. Shallow emotions often are seen in cult leaders and psychopaths. The whole fake tears, fake anger. Many people have caught those in charge pretending to care when in reality they don't. Whenever they kill, kill people on 9-11 or set up a PSYOP, then they have crisis actors with fake and shallow emotions meant to manipulate and pass laws. They want to, they want to see yet they forget about what we want, yet we still vote for them. And when I'm talking about 9-11, I believe 9-11 people did actually die. What I'm saying is even some of these people, like leaders came out pretending they cared, they weren't really crying for real. And then when you look at President uh, George W. Bush at the time, he was down there with those children and it just seemed like a little ritual when he was having them read that, if you've ever seen that video clip, 
And then, of course, some of these other recent events, people are calling false flags or psyops. They really do have crisis actors. They lack true empathy. That is why you can find so many quotes from them saying that the population should be reduced. Why they set up places like Planned Parenthood for the unborn to be slaughtered. Why they would do things such as 9-11, an inside job. And have blood on their hands, yet not care. Let's not forget the rituals that take place involving children, women, and infants sacrifice. Or when they knock a celebrity off for being against them. Why they poison you, you and I's food, and try to market to us antidepressants and why they run the drug trade. Then the flip side, there are the victims of the cults. The ones that, when an outsider looks in and shakes their head and says... How did this weak mind, how did these weak minded people ever let this person take advantage of them? It is easier to criticize on the outside than when you're in the in, when than when you're on the inside. Those who are in the cult have to be brainwashed, have to be reassured that whatever fear, mistrust, or skepticism that they have is an error of their own. That they are overreacting. Studies show most people in cults actually are normal people. We like to think of cults as a bunch of weak minded, depressed people, but no, that's generally not the case. Then after a while, they get used to the abnormalities and atypical behavior of whomever is oppressing them. They begin to make excuses for it and say, oh, they're, they're just mad, or they still love me. They start to love their captor after a while and soon turn the negatives they saw into good traits. Our society isn't much different. Either people complain about the government and how crappy the music is and the stupidity of everyone around them and how no one's learning anything in school these days yet people are still following the same two-party system we still deny the underlying conspiracy still ignore that 13 families run the world we make excuses for their actions and say times have changed blah 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 people buy the clothing that they once abhorred and own it as their own we lose sight of who we truly are and of person was a side of their personal identity, of their own imagination. I remember a teacher saying to our class when I was about a freshman in high school, and they said that my generation has a problem with imagination. It just seems like they can't imagine anything. They're not creative. And I agree, which is sad, that a lot of people um, coming up through school, younger than me, slightly older, they aren't imagining anymore as much, but of course, when it comes to sex, they can still have an imagination is what they claim. But even that has been influenced by pornography, which is unrealistic to say the least. And our true emotions are suppressed, and that is why so many Americans suffer from a quote-unquote um, illness termed affluenza, which was something where people just spend and they're never happy. Why is it especially in the Western world? People live better than the rest, yet... There are so many unhappy people. Why is it that so many people commit suicide? Shouldn't it be the other way around by logic and we have more? I mean, kids today get tablets for their birthday. Kids elsewhere starve. Don't get me wrong. Starvation happens here in America with the homeless, and there are very poor underprivileged regions of our country. But I'm referring to the quote-unquote working class, since that is the majority, depending on how you define it. People refer to people who are a part of a cult as zombies because it seems that they've lost touch with reality, that they are just out of it. Whomever their leader is has brainwashed them to the point they are like the walking dead. The leaders can take advantage of them. How many of those still plugged into the Matrix are like these quote-unquote zombies? These people who are asleep, they go with the flow and allow the cult leader being society, the B system, to tell them what to do, what to think. Then when someone comes along and gets upset, and they get upset and say, how dare they defy them? I know people who get so upset with me if I bring up any of this, and they just can't seem to get it. Just like those in a cult, I'm sad to say, unfortunately, if they fail to see what they are part of, they may just drink the Kool-Aid of the New World Order, Mark of the Beast, and Antichrist. Even those who say they are, are, are watchmen or, or churches who preach all day yet let the 501c3 control their sermons, or those who claim to be free thinkers yet are blind to the conspiracy, even some people I know who say that they're awake to this are still being influenced by the cult 
system. Just like a cult, they will die believing in everything their master told them, even scarier, their vision. The even sadder part is that the true head, the true eye on top of the pyramid, is not a bunch of stuffy old money people, but Lucifer himself, and many will die being caught in his web of lies. After all, he is the father of lies and deception, even if they thought they were aware, like Socrates' story of the cave of the ch of those chained to the wall, unable to see the fire itself, just a shadow. Most live in the shadow rather than in reality and don't realize it, and they'll never turn around to see the fire. I hope you enjoyed my analysis and compare and contrast of occult psychology to modern society. It was sort of a rant, so I apologize, but I felt I had to deviate from the norm of research and commentary and just talk to you guys about this ongoing problem. Half of the battle is with ourselves. We have to believe first before we can proceed and jolt ourselves out of the cult mindset. I'd like to thank you for listening. I hope you have a wonderful week, and I'll talk to you next week. Thank you.